Hades is a god in Greek mythology who rules the land of the dead called the Underworld. He is one of the three most powerful Greek gods, along with his brothers Zeus and Poseidon. Hades is usually pictured with a beard, a helmet or crown, and holding a two-pronged pitchfork or a staff. Often his three-headed dog, Cerberus, is with him. When travelling, he rides a chariot pulled by black horses. Hades had complete control of the underworld and all its subjects. Besides being an immortal god, one of his special powers was invisibility. He wore a helmet called the Helm of Darkness that allowed him to become invisible. The Helm of Darkness, or the Cap of Invisibility, was a magical piece of armour that the Cyclops had made specifically for Hades during the Titanomachy after being set free. It enabled the user to turn invisible upon wearing it. It is also speculated that after the war, the Helm received even greater power a power of controlling the dead in the underworld. Hades lent his helm to other gods a couple of times, and once to a demigod, Perseus, in his quest to defeat Medusa. Athena is also noted to be wearing the helm during the Trojan War to help Diomedes, while Hermes used it to fight Hippolytus in the Gigantomachy. Hades was the son of Cronos and Rhea, the king and queen of the Titans. After being born, Hades was swallowed by his father Cronos to prevent a prophecy that a son would someday overthrow him. Hades was eventually saved by his younger brother, Zeus. After the Olympians defeated the Titans, Hades and his brother drew lots to divide up the world. Zeus drew the sky, Poseidon drew the sea, and Hades drew the underworld. The underworld is where dead people go in Greek mythology. Hades wasn't very happy about getting the underworld at first, but when Zeus explained to him that all the people of the world would eventually be his subjects, Hades decided it was okay. In order to guard his realm, Hades had a giant three-headed dog named Cerberus. Cerberus guarded the entrance to the underworld. He kept the living from entering and the dead from escaping. Another helper for Hades was Charon. Charon was Hades' ferryman. He would take the dead on a boat across the river Styx and Acheron from the world of the living to the underworld. The dead had to pay a coin to Charon to cross, or they would have to wander the shores for 100 years. Hades became very lonely in the underworld and wanted a wife. Zeus said he could marry his daughter Persephone. However, Persephone did not want to marry Hades and live in the underworld. Hades then kidnapped Persephone and forced her to come to the underworld. Regardless of her wishes, Zeus let the vicious abduction come to pass. While playing with the daughters of Oceanus at the distant fields of Nysa, Persephone was guided into a trap by magical flowers. The flowers had shown her the pathway to an irresistible flower with hundred stems of fragrant blossom. When she reached out with both hands to pluck the flower, the earth opened and Hades appeared with his golden chariot abducting her before anyone could hear her screaming. However, two immortals, Helios and Hecate, were able to hear her plea for help. Demeter, Persephone's mother and goddess of crops, became sad and neglected the harvest and the world suffered famine. Following Demeter's curse, which began with great droughts on the lands and consequently created the famine, it was Hecate who came to Demeter and told her about what she had heard. Together, they went to Helios, who was able to see all the deeds from both mortals and immortals. He told Demeter that Zeus and Hades were to blame. She was mad and had given an ultimatum for the lands to stay barren until she was able to see her daughter again. Finally, Zeus intervened, scared of seeing all mortals gone. He sent Hermes to the underworld to speak to Hades and try convincing him to let Persephone return to her mother. After Hermes' successful persuasion, Hades was willing to let her go, but, on the other hand, tricked her with a honey-sweet pomegranate seed as a farewell gift. After eating the seed, she became bound to the underworld and would eventually have to return. Finally, the gods came to an agreement and Persephone would live with Hades for four months of the year. These months are represented by winter, when nothing grows. Hades was also involved in the myth of Hercules, who was in the last of his twelve labours. The hero came to the underworld to capture Cerberus alive and bring him back before Eurystheus. 
When he met Hades, Hercules asked the god for permission to take away the three-headed beast from the underworld. Hades was surprised by the boldness and bravery of the hero and would let him take his pet if he was able to wrestle and outmatch it. In the end, Hercules was able to do just that and brought the beast back to Mycenae. There is also another version of the story in which it was Persephone who gave Cerberus to the hero as a gift for freeing Theseus and Pirithus of chains and bringing them back to the upper world. This was not the only account where Hercules met Hades. According to Homer, the couple had been engaged in a battle on the battlefield of Pylos, where the hero wounded Hades, who then went to Olympus and complained to Zeus about it. Zeus calmed his brother down and asked Paeon to heal him. In another myth, Hades and Persephone were enchanted by the music of Orpheus, who was looking for his dead wife, Eurydice. Hades then granted Orpheus the return of his wife back to Earth. However, the god gave him the strict condition that he must not look at his wife until they reached the surface. But Orpheus looked back at his wife too soon, and her shade was pulled back to the underworld. This was the story of Hades, god of the dead and ruler of the underworld in Greek mythology. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions or thoughts, write them in the comments section below. Yours truly, Mythos, the Historian.